congratulations. First, my name is uh, John Dyson. I'm uh, Pro Boeing Product Marketing. Today's day two of the Dubai Air Show. Uh, really excited to bring you aboard the 777-9. Uh, you'll see this is the flight test configuration. Uh, we have four airplanes of flight tests right now. We have over 3,000 hours and 1,000 cycles already performed and many more in counting. Uh, the aircraft is really configured in a way to move water around and move weight around to help for a CG loading and different, uh, different flight profiles they want to do. Uh, but ultimately, if you look at the cabin, uh, you'll notice just the cabin breadth, the size of the cabin. It's four inches wider than the existing 777 300ER, so you get that true ten abreast comfort uh, and 747 levels of comfort. Uh, what will also be unique about this airplane is you're going to have larger windows, uh, you're going to have a 6,000 foot cabin altitude, uh, you're going to have quieter uh, air conditioning system. All these things we learned from the 787, we're bringing in the 777 and, and evolving them even further. Um, another thing to note is the length of the aircraft. It is longer, about two meters longer than an existing 777 300ER. So we'll get about 426 passengers in a dual class configuration on this aircraft, which is about 30 more passengers than the 300ER, about 50 more passengers than the competing aircraft. Uh, the windows on the 777X are going to be 14% larger than the 777 300ER, 40% larger than the competition. They're also placed higher, so as you're seated, you don't have to kind of crane your neck to look out. We really think the connection to the sky is important. And as you see out these large windows, you can see the really iconic feature of the 777X, the folding wingtip. And really the beauty of that is that at that folding wingtip that extends, uh, when it extends out, that gives the, the aircraft about three and a half more meters of wingspan on each side, so seven more meters of wingspan. And that gives us great lift efficiency. When you see in, in, in nature, small birds fly versus big birds, big birds don't have to work as hard as they fly, even though they're heavier, because they have huge wingspans. And so this aircraft actually has the same type of effect. It has a bigger wingspan than any other commercial aircraft in the world, so it has the best lift efficiency in the world. Another thing you'll see on the wing, uh, you'll see this gigantic engine, which we'll show you a little bit later, but that's the new GE9X engine. It uh, builds on the legacy of the GE90. It's the fourth generation engine of the GE platforms. Uh, that's gonna be brought by the 777X. Uh, incredibly efficient, uh, uses composite, uh, ceramic matrix composites, uh, fan blades that are larger, about six inches larger or uh, 15 centimeters larger uh, than the existing uh, GE9115B engine on the 777 300ER. Uh, so again, the combination of the big wing, which gives us about a 7% advantage, or sorry, 6% advantage uh, versus the competition uh, and the engine, as well as another 6% advantage there. So overall about 10% better fuel efficiency than the competition. So from this kind of mid cabin of the fuselage, you'll see uh, a lot of boxes, wiring, and all the orange wiring you see in the aircraft is all the test setup. So all these orange wires run out to the engines, they run out to the uh, flight control systems, uh, surfaces, they run out to different various areas of the aircraft. So we can actually track everything that's happening in real time in flight. And so we have flight test engineers that'll sit here during the flight and monitor the aircraft and make sure it's within the parameters that we want to have it, um, the aircraft perform within. And if we see any variations, then we start to track it and we take it back to the lab, figure out is that uh, something we, were, we can accept or something that we need to improve upon. Uh, so it's just a really a, an iterative process. We keep finding the aircraft, keep finding, okay, if we push the aircraft in this way, how can we make it uh, respond in such a way that we, it's within the parameters of the, the flight envelope. So uh, it's a really exciting time for the, for the program. Uh, this aircraft does a lot of the work. It's pretty much the workhorse of the flight test program right now. Uh, and so we're excited to bring it here to Dubai. What the, the, the displays and stuff here are the way that we can monitor the system on the airplane. So the, our data system is connected into both the production systems on the airplane. So any of the systems, the, the engines, the air conditioning packs, the flight control system, all of that data is coming in to here. And we can monitor any aspect of the production systems. We also have applied, you know, several thousand sensors uh, to as dedicated instrumentation so we can monitor that also to help ensure that the data that the production systems are getting are matching what it should do on the airplane. So we can monitor all of that here uh, at any point during flight. We have probably on the order between the production and our applied instrumentation over 200,000 individual measurements that we can monitor at any time. In terms of the data rate, it's it's pretty high. I, I don't know the number in terms of you know megabits per second, gigabits per second, something like that, but it's a lot of data that's available. It can help us understand if the systems are operating correctly. It's also used to, to certify the airplane, so we'll be using that data to match, look at the models and make sure the models that we use to de design and develop the airplane, that the data we're collecting in, on board matches that so that we can certify the airplane, ultimately. That, that's the real goal. Okay, so earlier I mentioned the great new features of the engine. Let's go in depth a little bit more. So here we have the GE9X. It's based again off the GE9115B platform. Incredibly reliable, incredibly durable, really tested to suit this environment of a hot, humid, and very sandy, dusty environment. So it's gonna be very durable here. Uh, this engine produces 105 
5,000 pounds of thrust, which if you know your engines, does 10,000 less pounds of thrust than the existing G90 engine. Now how do we get away with that? Because this is a pretty big airplane, right? It's a longer airplane. Because of the wing, we are generating more lift, right? We're generating 7% more lift than the 777 ER. So because we're getting more, generating more lift, we don't need as much thrust. So we can power this aircraft with 20,000 less pounds of thrust than the existing 777 today, which is a pretty amazing feat and a really testament to the wing design. Uh, the fan blades, uh, we went from 22 inch uh, fan blades down to 16 fan blades. Uh, we upped the uh, bypass ratio from 9 to 10 to 1, uh, so we're pushing more air through and we're pushing more air around the core, which gives us that optimal fuel consumption that gives us that fuel burn benefit. So what are the unique and iconic features of the 777X that you're going to see at every airport in the next uh, 2025 when it comes into service? Yeah, it's the folding wingtip. Now again, the folding wingtip purpose is to extend the wing, give it a bigger wingspan or a larger wingspan. And so if you look at where the hinge line is or where the actual wing folds, that's actually where the 777-300ER wing stops, and everything beyond that is now the 777X. So with the folding wingtip, we actually generate 3% more lift than you would if you had a conventional winglet on the end of it like our competitor does. Uh, so for our firm belief is that this is the best, comp uh, best choice to give you the most lift while also giving you the same airport gate compatibility of a Cody aircraft, which is constrained by 65 meters. Uh, so again, this gives us the optimal trade-off between biggest wing wins with a wingspan, so the aspect ratio is close 10 to 1, uh, which gives us a big improvement of our competition uh, while also giving us the uh, uh, compatibility with existing uh, gate spacing today that any 777 flies into today, the 777X will also be able to fly into in the future. Uh, you'll see, you'll notice a lot of co common uh, commonality or similarity to the 787, and that's not by accident. If you look at the multi-format large displays, uh, those came from the 787. Highest loved them, great situational awareness, reduced crew workload. Uh, so we have four of those, or actually five of those big monitors on there. Uh, what's new for the 777X on top of the new monitors for, for it are going to be the touchscreen capability on those monitors. So actually this morning I was kind of going through the systems to kind of see how things work. And uh, I used to troubleshoot the 787, and it's a lot easier the touchscreen. So from a crew workload as well as maintenance workload, it's a much friendlier experience. Uh, if you look at the P5 overhead panel, everything up here is pretty much similar to the existing 777 today. Uh, if you look uh, kind of lower level uh, by the fast seatbelt sign, uh, you'll see the wingtip uh, switch. And so what's cool about that is uh, when you uh, push back from the gate, uh, pilots have a checklist they normally work, the pre-departure checklist. Uh, and as they're uh, taxing out, one of the items on that checklist will be to fold the wingtips down. And so once they clear that, the checklist goes green and they're ready to take off. Uh, similarly, or conversely on the ground, when the aircraft lands in auto mode, uh, when the aircraft lands weight on wheels and you get below 50 knots ground speed, the wingtips will automatically fold back up. So by the time you exit the runway and get on the taxiway, you'll be in a Cody compliant uh, configuration. On the 777X, we'll also have optional capability for heads up displays, both for the pilot as well as the first officer. Uh, again, very very, uh, I guess, current technology for today, but uh, something we brought in the 777X. Uh, so what's great about this flight deck design is that we did intend we designed it intentionally to have a lot of commonality between the 787 and 777. So pilot training right now, we're anticipating it'll be anywhere from four to five days transition training between a four, uh, 777 today or 787. So you can have a lot of commonality between the two airframes, and a lot, or I guess three airframes, and do a lot of mixed fleet flying. So we anticipate for a lot of operators in which uh, 38 are current 777 and 787 operators, that the 777X on top of that will allow for a lot of mixed speed flying amongst their fleets as they replace 777s with 777Xs.